welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Ian Sheridan, and here are the headlines. Reaction to the budget. What does this mean for young people? With Black History Month coming to a close, we explore the Windrush scandal. And there is a stripy new arrival at Marwell Zoo. It's been a year since the Me Too movement shocked the world, with men and women coming together to share their experiences. There's been change in Hollywood and politics, but what impact has it had on university campuses? Moving away from home to university is a challenging time for most students, and this is made even more worrying due to the threat of sexual harassment. If I got sexually assaulted, I do not know where I would go, what I would do. Campaign group Revolt Sexual Assault and the Student Room carried out a poll of over 5,000 students and two-thirds said they had been sexually assaulted or harassed in their time at university. Out of that number, only 6% felt able to report it to a member of staff and only 10% to the police. You're never going to get everyone talking about it because end of the day some people are still scared, they feel like they can't, maybe they don't have the access to talk to someone about it, but I think from where it was, it's definitely improved. A year on from the start of the Me Too campaign, the movement which has encouraged survivors of sexual assault to speak up about their past, the government have pledged to eliminate sexual harassment of women and girls by 2030. I'm Emily Wilson, reporting for Winchester News Online. It's been billed by the government as the budget that will end austerity, but not everyone agrees. Joseph Lyons finds out the positives and the negatives for young people. Everyone's talking about the budget, but how does it affect young people? First time home buyers of up to £500,000 won't have to pay any stamp duty, which is a tax taken when buying a house. £500 million has been put into building new homes. Good news for pub goers, beer, cider and spirit duties are to be frozen. But a bottle of wine will cost you an extra 8p as of February. The national living wage is due to rise to £8.21 in April. At the same time, the amount you can earn before being taxed will rise to £12,500 and the minimum wage will rise for 18 to 24 year olds, but the Chancellor didn't say by how much. We asked a few students how they'd spend government money. Well, I'd spend money on trying to make people's lives better, and that means giving them the tools and resources they need to thrive and survive. Um, so that means giving people access to education for all, regardless of your background or income. Travel is a thing that needs to be fixed. Because it's just such a night. Like, I live down in Poole. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know it. But it's just an absolute nightmare. It's, there's roadworks everywhere, and they can't seem to put it together and do something about it. If I had to spend it on one thing, it would pr I'd probably on relief acts. So, yeah, yeah. to help, help people in need. While you may be tasting sour grapes if you like wine, there are some positives to be taken from this autumn budget for young people. However, this could all be scrapped in the event of a no-deal Brexit, which will trigger an emergency budget. Joseph Lyons, Winchester News Online. There has been an outrage over controversial comments made by the student union president of Southampton University, who described a painting dedicated to war heroes as a mural to white men and called for it to be taken down. Our re reporter Matilda Appleyard has been covering this story. Can you tell us a bit more, Matilda? Yeah, of course. This has actually caused quite a stir on social media and with other local student unions. Emily Dawes believes that the painting at Southampton University should be taken down, and she even believes that it should be painted over. She obviously doesn't realise that the meaning behind this painting is that students went away to war and they never got the chance to graduate. I asked the student union president at the University of Winchester, Tally Atbars, his opinion on how this situation was handled. In terms of what she said, I think... Her comments were not appropriate. I think the context of that mural about respecting those from the First World War is why it's there and people know why it's there. I think what she was trying to get across maybe wasn't shown and her campaigning has always been about more representation for women in images and pictures across campus. 
but I don't think you get that by destroying one more mural or taking one mural down. Since I interviewed Tally Akbars, the University of Southampton has actually published a statement saying that the comments made on Twitter by the student union president regarding the mural are not shared by the university and do not represent the views of the university community. Emily Dawes has since apologised for her tweet, saying that she never meant to cause any offence. OK, thank you very much for that, Tilda. And now, with over 2 million students in the UK studying away from home, getting access to a GP can be difficult. But there are now calls for this to change. Lauren Hodgson reports. Around 26,000 students have signed a petition to access their local GP, as well as one while attending university. This is due to a number of students across the country suffering from mental and physical health issues while studying away from home. But with the demand for students to have two GPs, is it really affordable for the NHS? Problems get left too long and they don't get picked up early enough, so I don't think it costs too much to encourage people to use GPs in a sensible and responsible way. Um, and the NHS is talking about what it wants to do in the next 10 years now. They're talking about what they want to do with digital technology. From my point of view, this should be a priority to make it so that people um, can, students can access GP when they're at home and when they're studying. The government have since responded saying, GP practices must provide urgent and immediately necessary treatment from 8am to 6.30pm to anyone regardless of whether they are registered at the practice. This petition has gone far since it started. It has even been put forward to Parliament as shown and it raises the question whether the same should be done for people who work away from home. But with the NHS in the process of digitalising everything, it will be a while until this can be achieved. Lauren Hodgson for Winchester News Online. Construction is happening at the University of Winchester. Outside Tom Atkinson building, a new railing is being made to ensure safety for students. Work should be done by mid-November. There's some scary going on in Winchester. In celebration of Halloween, Winchester businesses have organized a spooky trail across the town. There are cash prizes for adults and goodie bags for children. There are growing concerns that young people are less active than ever before. The university has designed a scheme to keep young people fit and happy. Our reporter Marlon Ailing Allen investigates. Keeping fit and having fun, University of Winchester students were taking advantage of a free badminton session on Friday set up by the university's Get Active scheme, amongst the growing concern for young people's mental and physical health. I went along to find out more. Um, so the scheme itself, it started in 2016, I believe. Um, and that was started by our sports uh, operations and participation manager, Phil Malatesta. Um, so it's a, it won an award in its first year. Um, it's all based around the sort of inclusivity of sport um, and encouraging participation. So it's not competitively um, driven sport, which is often what we find with the SUE teams. So it's kind of trying to offer an alternative to that and just encouraging um, active lifestyles around the uni. In fact, recent statistics by the NCD RISC show that 40% of people between 5 and 19 years old are obese, and a survey by BBC Radio 4 found that 16 to 24 year olds are more lonely than any other age group. So what does Jack think about this? I think a big issue of it is inactivity, um, which is a nationwide thing and it's true all ages, um, but obviously it's a particular issue within younger groups. Um, that's why schemes like this are good. Um, this scheme specific to the uni, but it's a nationwide thing. Everyone, there's a lot of things similar that are trying to tackle inactivity because I think that's one of the biggest causes. Marlon Ailing Allen, Winchester News Online. Now everyone knows that there are no shortages of cafes in Winchester. Our reporter Athena Lakey visited Thrive Cafe, so let us find out more. <laughs> A vegan and vegetarian cafe in Winchester helps build a healthy community with yoga classes and mindfulness. Well, the food and the community element goes hand in hand. I think a cafe needs to be more than just a cafe. And so bringing my yoga in seemed like a natural fit with the vegetarian food. Approaching its two-year anniversary, the cafe itself promotes more than just healthy food. In terms of our community, 
community board here it was cultivated a wellness community absolutely that was much more I think fragmented before it's not just great coffee and great food but people really feel like they're a real person and we get to meet them The University of Winchester has just celebrated Diversity Week. Earlier, I spoke to two activists and got their opinions about the Windrush scandal. It's Black History Month and racial tension is still never far from the news. The University of Winchester has offered a platform for activists to speak out about what is happening, especially in relation to Windrush immigrants. They were people that were invited to the UK to build up the UK after the Second World War. They came as doctors, nurses, engineers. Some came here and worked from Kianci in the morning to Kianci at night. And then they turned around and found out and said, I'm not a status. So it's a lot of Africans, so we have to highlight it and uplift it, you know? But Jim Baker, whose Barbadian grandfather settled here before the Windrush arrival, says this treatment by Britain is nothing new. I think that what's happened to them is wrong. I think they've been treated badly. But I think they're just part of a long, long line. And I think the real trauma is they've just realised they're part of a real wrong, long, long line of racist acts. And whenever there's a bad times in Britain, it throws out people. They were just the latest group. The government has set up a Windrush task force to decide on compensation for the people affected by this. Who were the nurses and doctors? Over your head, Prime Minister, and gave you love. Then you showed us hate, Prime Minister, and gave you spices to flavor your food, Prime Minister, and gave you music to lighten your mood. And that was Scratchulous with his question time for the Prime Minister. And finally, over half term, an endangered Grevy's zebra was born at Marwell Zoo. Natalie Jaksikova reports. The sun is shining here at Marwell Zoo and people from all over Hampshire are coming to see an exciting new arrival. In the early hours of October 12th, an endangered Grevy zebra was born here at Marwell Zoo in Winchester. The yet to be named foal was born to a zebra named Imogen. Being a it's male, it will have a slightly better impact instead of being female, just because it can go off to different zoos, become part of the international breeding programme, and it could sire between 15 to 20 foals in its lifetime from the time it hits maturity, which is going to be about 15 months to two years. Because it's one and it's in captivity, it's not really going to have massive impact on the wild population, but like I say, it will boost the population in captivity, and maybe at some point it can be released into the wild, or its foals can then be released. It was skipping around in the main paddock and yeah it was lovely, it was a nice addition and we're members here so it's nice to see something different and yeah. see new um, animals coming through. Everyone's had fun taking a walk on the wild side today. Nancy Jacks Cover, Winchester News Online. That's all for now. I'm Ian Sheridan. Thanks for watching.